Hi everyone, this is Dr. Diane Hayden, publisher of Natural Nutmeg and Elm Maine Magazines. And welcome to our Lunch and Learn live videos where I'm interviewing expert writers and contributors, contributors for our publications on how to cope with the COVID-19 situation and generally uplifting interviews about how to lead a more holistic, natural lifestyle with tips you can easily integrate into your daily life. Today I have with me Karen St. Clair. She's up in Maine, and she is a highly skilled advanced certified EFT tapping practitioner, Psych K facilitator, Matrix reimprinting practitioner, UC Reiki Master of Masters, and founder of Reiki Tap Renewal with a true gift for facilitating her clients' life-changing outcomes. So welcome, Karen. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Diane. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. You're welcome. So I wanted to start by talking about what is EFT tapping? Because I, I have a feeling that some people on the call or listening to this recording are, are saying, I've never even heard of that. What is that? So let's start there and then and just talk about how you got in, you know, what it is and how you got involved in it and your passion for it. Okay. EFT tapping is a modality where it uses your meridian system. Everyone has a meridian system that runs like a large oval up one side of their body and down the other. And so we are tapping on meridian points, the same points that are used in acupuncture, but these points that we use, and you'll see because I'll do a short demo, but these points are closest to the skin, so we don't need needles to get in to um, activate their energy. And as we're tapping on these meridian points, we're also talking about what it is that the issue that we want to work on that day. Um, <clears throat> something might be bothering you and um, you have pain or whatever it is. And I can just say right now, tapping works on everything. So. <clears throat> the reason, excuse me, the reason that it works on everything is because most of our problems that we have are stored in our body and they begin with energy. They begin with anger or fear or some emotion that we've stuffed in our body. And we do it naturally, but we don't realize we're doing it. So as life goes on, we keep on stuffing these things in our body and eventually the body reacts in illnesses and pain and that kind of thing because that's the only way the body has to to uh, communicate with us it has to say stop doing that <laughs> so so that's eft um, in a nutshell i think it's easier to see eft done and we, we can do as i said we can do a little demo and everyone can do it with me um, yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. And you just wrote a great article. It's coming out in the um, May, June issue of Elm, Maine. And uh, if those of you are in Maine, you can obviously get pick up the uh, physical magazine. But if not, you can go to our website and get that article. But I loved about how I, I loved the way you outlined it. Um, it was very sit, like easy to understand and follow. And it's all related to basically stress and anxiety, you know, not just for this COVID situation, but really for anything in your life that you're feeling fear about, you right. know, or stress or anxiety. So that's a yep. great resource. Yes, thank you. Um, well, stress and anxiety are probably the two largest things that I'm dealing with, um, that my clients are dealing with right now. So because our whole world has been tipped upside down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every aspect of our world is changed. So it, you know, it, there's all this, stress you think of one thing and you get stressed about that and then something else happens and you get stressed about that so there's a lot of that i think a lot of it for many of us is the unknown like isn't that what we're all what most fear boils down to is, is i i feel like um not knowing what's going to happen and feeling like you don't have any control over it right right well, the only thing that we can control is how we feel about it so that's why EFT is so good at bringing down the anxiety in your body so that you can feel differently about it. Um, the cortisol, the stress hormone is cortisol. And when we get into a stressful situation or into fight or flight, which is you know the tiger jumping out of the bushes or when you're driving and someone stops short in front of you, you go into that fight or flight reaction. 
your body fills with cortisol for a reason to allow you to either fight or flight or whatever it is you have to do to get through this, whatever is happening. All of the blood drains out of your frontal cortex into your extremities so that you can do that action. And so you're not really thinking clearly. And tapping brings down the cortisol. We have research and fMRIs that show the cortisol coming down during tapping. So tapping tells the body and gives the amygdala a signal that everything's okay. Your amygdala is your alarm system in your brain. Your amygdala gets triggered and then you go into fight or flight and the cortisol level. It, it, all of this happens within an instant. So it's not like you can not have it happen. It's supposed to happen. It's the way your body is made and it's there to keep us safe. Right. Yeah. Just not for extended periods of time. <laughs> like, no, exactly. you know, we, we were created with that for times when we did have to actually flee from a predator or whatever. And now, yeah. you know, we're, we're sitting at our desk and our boss is causing us stress or we have stress in a relationship or we have stress over health or a family issue or whatever. And it's chronic stress. I mean, we don't, we allow ourselves to stay in that high anxious state for, for way too long. And that's not the way our bodies were designed. No. So like, like an animal, I mean, like if you watch an animal that is being, you know, attacked or whatever, they're, they're running, if they escape, they basically shake it off and they go back to normal like that. You know, we, we don't do that because the way that our minds work, we continue to keep thinking about it and, and analyzing it and keep bringing up those emotions. And it's a, I've been reading a lot of um, books now on just like the neuroscience behind it and you know, what, what the power of the mind really in, in, in actually creating scenarios that aren't even happening right. and, and staying in that scenario. I mean, if you actually, if you're afraid to fly and you think about getting on a plane, you can actually feel your body getting anxious and right. you're not even in the situation. You're sitting in your house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We tend to live in the past or the future. Yep. We rarely live in the present. And if we stayed in the present, we would realize that we're not on the plane. So we don't have to be frightened. And we're, we're not on the plane when we were on the plane. We're not there. We're right here right now. We're fine. And if you can just remind yourself to stay present, it's very helpful. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about how, how did you discover this? How did you get into EFT tapping? Well, I have an advertising agency and I want, just want to start there because that was, that, that's my um, one company that I have. And, uh, but I've always been interested in energy modalities and, alternative healing and things like that, interested, um, read a lot about it and so forth. And a friend of mine called me about nine years ago and said, how would you like to go take an EFT course? And I thought, why would I do that? <laughs> right. Know? So then I thought about it and I thought, well, what the heck, I'll just go do that. And I fell in love with that. It was just so simple and so profound at the same time. And such a good tool for as a self-help tool, I thought, um, well, I had my own experience with it in terms of um, clearing pain that I had had for 16 years. I had sciatic pain and I did everything imaginable to try and get rid of this pain. So I thought, well, let me try this new tool that I have. Let me try tapping on this. And so I started tapping and within 20 minutes, the pain was gone. Wow. And it was incredibly emotional. Um, it was about something that had happened with my father that came up because that's what tapping does. It brings up what we've stuffed in there. So into our bodies. So it came up for me. I didn't even know it was going to, of course, and it was very emotional and I just kept tapping through it and I got through it and the pain went away. And when that happened, I said, I have to do this. I have to share this with people because it's so, so strong um, of a modality. 
you know, and you can do it yourself. So it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many stories of, of that's how holistic practitioners got into their field essentially is they were dealing with some chronic issue or acute issue and they found a modality that changed everything for them. Right. And it sounds like the same thing happened with you too. Yes, absolutely. So. And I find, um, well, I think I'm the, oh, I, I think I know I'm the only advertising agency that has an energetic twist to it because I have both companies now. I would have to agree. <laughs> I don't think I've ever come across one, but that's great because think of the, just the difference in terms of now how you look at positioning clients and what their needs are and how to get their message, you know, across in a way that's going to be more effective for them. Absolutely. And, and the psychology of sales, mm -hmm. you know, marketing equals sales in the, at the end of the day. So the psychology that I can bring now to um, share with my clients in the strategy piece is really profound. So that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And, ho and hopefully you can help your clients with EFT right now because <laughs> I'm sure a lot of them are under stress. <laughs> I know a couple of the ad agencies I'm dealing with, like everything is pretty much on hold, you know, right now. So they're dealing with their own stressors for sure. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I'm dealing with all kinds of changes in messaging. Right. So, yep, exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about um, how tapping can be your go-to self-help tool in times, you know, now, of course, with what we're dealing with, with the COVID situation. And like I said, you know, again, really anytime, this isn't something to just think about doing because we're under this high stress situation, but really any time in your life where, you know, going forward when you're dealing with any kind of anxiety. Absolutely. Um, right now it's, you know, people's lives are upside down. So that's like, that's almost like a new anxiety that no one's ever had to deal with before. Um, but like you said, any kind of a problem that does evoke an emotion in you, whether it's fear or, you know, it doesn't have to be an emotion, it can be pain. But even if it is pain, I would ask my client, how do you feel about the pain? Let's say I, my leg hurts. Um, and I would say, how do you feel about your leg hurting? So there's that element of it. And so you isolate, the way the tapping works is you isolate how you're feeling about the problem and then we, well, I, this is a good time to do a demo because I, I, I yeah, doing it. Yeah. Definitely. And I, I also want to make sure that people really get what you're saying right now, because that what, what you're saying, how do you feel about your problem or your health issue? I think is something that most people don't, aren't even aware of, haven't even thought of, don't even take into consideration. It's like, when you said it, it made me stop and think, wow, like, I don't know if I've ever really thought in that way. I mean, I understand about energy medicine and how, you know, th my belief is things manifest in an energy field first before they manifest in the body. But when you said it like clearly like that, it something like clicked to me like, wow, people don't think about feelings. Usually we're trying to get rid of feelings, <laughs> especially ones we don't like, right? Well, so that, that's important to, I think, for people to really think about how do you feel about this problem that you have. Right, and I think I wanna just back up and clarify what you said, that people don't think. It's that people don't feel. Right. Because we're not conditioned to feel. We're conditioned to plow through it and maybe take a pill, you know, to get rid of it. It's always about get rid of it. And that's another, that's another way of just keeping that stuffed in your body because it's not going to really go away. When the pill wears off, it's going to come back, you know? Yep. So, yeah. So Diane, if you want to, um, if we, you can do tapping with me and we can make something up if you want to, or it can be something real. That's okay. But just as a, we'll just do it as a demonstration. Yeah. I think, um, because so many people are, are um, 
concerned about not having control or being afraid of what's going to happen, whether it's with their business or their family or things like that with this situation. Let's go, you know, almost like what you talked about in your article. I think that would be really relevant for people right now. Okay. All right. So in my article, I talked about fear. Of, I think I did. You did. Yep. <laughs> I talked about fear of the unknown. And I also um, want to remind us that we should talk about the immune system as well. But right now, let's focus on fear of the unknown. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, and then if we were working on fear of the unknown with you, Diane, I would say to you, how do you feel about the fear of the unknown? Um, it, it, it makes me unsettled. It makes me anxious. Okay. So on a scale from zero to 10, this is also something that we do. We measure where you're at on a scale to zero, from zero to 10, 10 being the highest. So where do you fall on the scale in terms of being anxious about the fear of the future? I'll say, yeah, I'll say like a seven or an eight. Okay. All right. So we're going to do something called the setup statement, and that isolates what it is we're going to be working on. So we're going to tap on the side of our hand. Does it matter which hand? No. Okay. No. Any hand. So we're just going to tap here lightly, and you're going to repeat after me. Okay, that's how this works. Okay. So even though. Even though. I feel so fearful. I feel so fearful. And so anxious. And so anxious. About the unknown. About the unknown. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely. Accept myself. Accept myself. Even though, we do this three times, even though. Even though. I'm feeling so anxious. I'm feeling so anxious. About the unknown in the future. About the unknown in the future. I deeply and completely, I deeply and completely accept myself just the way I am. Accept myself just the way I am. Okay, one more time. Even though, even though I'm feeling so anxious about the unknown future, I'm feeling so anxious about the unknown future. I deeply and completely, I deeply and completely love and accept myself love and accept myself just the way i am just the way i am okay so now we're going to start tapping on right where your eyebrows come together we're going to tap there and repeat after me i'm so anxious i'm so anxious on the side of the eye i'm so anxious i'm so anxious we're tuning into our body here under the eye I'm feeling all of this anxiety. I'm feeling all of this anxiety. Under the nose, all this anxiety in my body. All this anxiety in my body. On the chin. I'm really anxious about the unknown. I'm really anxious about the unknown. On your collarbone. I'm so anxious about the future. I'm so anxious about the future. Under your arm, all this anxiety about the future. All this anxiety about the future. On top of the head, my body feels like it's filled with anxiety. My body feels like it's filled with anxiety. Let's go around again. I'm so anxious about the future. I'm so anxious about the future. On the side of the eye. I can't be in the future though. I can't be in the future though. Under the eye. I can only be in the present. I can only be in the present. Does that feel true? Yes. Okay. Under the nose. I can only be in the present. I can only be in the present. 
what if I could let go of the anxiety that I have about the future and stay in the present? I know that's long. Do you want me to break that up? No, I, th I, I think I got it. <laughs> what, could I, what, if I, what if I could let go of the anxiety in the future and stay in the present? On the collarbone. What if I could let go of the anxiety that I have about the future and stay in the present? What if I could let go of the anxiety that I have about the future and stay in the present? I choose to let the anxiety go from my body. I choose to let the anxiety go from my body. Under the arm. I choose to let my anxiety go. I choose to let my anxiety go. And stay in the present. And stay in the present. Top of the head. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. I feel fine. I feel fine. I'm calm. I'm calm. And I feel good. And I feel good. And that's my choice. And that's my choice. Let's take a deep breath in through our nose and out through our nose. Do you think it came down from a seven? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think because you're, it, it's, you're focusing, it's, it's like meditation to me. You're focusing, oh, or a way of meditation. You're focusing now on something that you're doing and by the, you know, the physical aspect of it and the repetitive process and the statements you're, you narrow your, your thinking into just doing what you're doing right now. Right. And what you're doing is your, your subconscious is hearing you say it out loud. Right. Subconscious mind is in control most of the time, and it just keeps on repeating negative thoughts and negative thoughts day after day. So <clears throat> when you hear yourself, say these positive things and you're tapping physically into your meridian system into your energy system it's bound to shift yeah yeah definitely i think well i don't know if you had this experience when you you know when you first started doing it but i think what's interesting and and maybe others you know ha have this too is when you do start saying those positive statements or positive affirmations at first, it's almost like, wait, do I believe that? <laughs> or, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a strange, it's almost like you're hearing this strange statement come out of your mouth because, like you said, you're not used to saying those things. You're used to the same negative programming, negative thoughts, maybe even, even if you don't say them all the time, like, I feel like, Outwardly, if you have conversations with me, I appear to be a very positive person. I don't speak it out loud, but that doesn't mean I don't hear those things, that I don't say them privately to myself. Right. They're going on. Right. Whether we show them or not, yeah. And I just wanted to circle back too, to clarify a little bit. That was a much shorter round than I would do with my clients. That was only two rounds of tapping. So I kind of, sped it up to the finish line much faster than I would. So you would probably wouldn't come to that place on your own. We would get there. Right. And eventually, if you kept on tapping and kept on saying, I feel so anxious, I feel so anxious, eventually you would say, no, I don't. And it would come up in a different way that you were shifting. And that's why I said to you, does that feel true? Because yeah. If it doesn't feel true, then we won't go on beyond that. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. So typically, how long is a session when people are working with you? A session can go anywhere from 60 minutes to 90 minutes, depending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're, we're not tapping every second of that. We're, I'm doing an intake in the beginning, 
and establishing what it is we're going to be working on and talking a little bit about that. And then we'll start tapping. And then when we, we take a breath and we have a break, then we'll talk about where they are in the scale of zero to 10. And I will ask, where are you on that scale and what's left in that number? And that takes a few moments of thinking. And so then we establish a different starting point and go back into it and then continue on until we get to one or zero. And how often do you recommend, I'm sure this is very individualized, but just you know, generally speaking, how many sessions do people do with you? That is individual. Um, I have clients that I see once a week that I have seen for years. I have clients that I've seen three times, you know, and then they're off on their own and that's wonderful. Um, so it varies. It really varies. Right. Uh, it all depends on, on what you want to do. Yeah, also, and I think the level of the person's issue, you know, what kind of, a, why they're coming, that kind of, what kind of issue are they dealing with? Um, and yeah. I, I feel like even if people don't work with you, you know, like, let's say the person who worked with you three times, don't you feel like this is something, it's, it's like exercise. You're not going to do it a couple of times and not ever do it again. You're going to continue to do this on your own. Anytime that you have a situation that you need to deal with that is, you know, well, it'll work for pretty much anything, but. Right. It does. Yeah. Work. yeah. And you do have to, um, I recommend tapping every day because there's always something to tap on. Even if it's just tiny, like I'm so angry at my husband for the way that he's put the dish dishes in the dishwasher, you know, or whatever, it was, whatever it is. Yeah. You know what else I love about it is I feel like it gives us permission to have an emotion. Like yes. for, for a long time, and I, I feel like I'm recently just beginning to not necessarily realize it, but allow it to be okay. That I feel like there are certain emotions we don't allow ourselves to have. Like it's not, it's not okay to be angry at someone. It's not okay to be mad at someone. Right. You know, and then when you do that to yourself, like you're saying, you just stuff that down. Like, you know, uh, that's not okay. And I'm just going to get, all it's going to do is just continue to make you angrier and then have things turn into resentment and frustration. That's right. That's right. And what you're describing is the software that we downloaded age zero to seven. In the last trimester of your mom's pregnancy, you started downloading the programming of what life was like. And up until age seven, we're in a delta wavelength and that's a hypnotic state. And that's where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to download all of the messages, all of the words, all of the emotions around us to know how to deal in our tribe, in our family, because that's what we learn as safe. And it might be that we were taught not to express. It wasn't accepted to have an opinion. So that's how we go forward and we keep on stuffing it. And that's just our software. So EFT and the other modalities that I do changes the software the subconscious that we were talking about uh, a few minutes ago is programmed with this software. So it's like getting new software for yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. How would you uh, compare it or, or differentiate it uh, with hypnosis? Well, hypnosis, um, I'm not an expert in hypnosis. No, I'm just asking your opinion. Yeah. Well, hypnosis is, I call it a journey that you're taken on by the hypnotist. So you go there, you have your journey, they bring you out of the journey. And I've never had hypnosis, so I don't know what the end feeling is, but um, it, it, it has a beginning and an end, right? So, and I think that, it, you know, it could help you with quitting smoking or, you know, things like that. I'm, uh, that's my feeling about it. But with tapping, you're actually, you're, you're tapping into 
maybe not the, a different system, but you're doing it physiologically. You know, not just the, the mindful piece, but physiologically you're tapping into your body. I think that, and I don't know if this is true, that it's maybe EFT is longer lasting than hypnosis and all the hypnotists out there, forgive me for saying that, I don't know that that's true. Um, but it seems to me that it could be, yeah. Yeah, I think it probably, again, depends on the individual, you know, like why, why are certain people drawn to certain things? What, what, not to say that one is better than the other, but, you know, hypnosis may work for, like you're saying, addictions, um, or they, it may just be that, that it works for a particular person and EFT works for a particular person, or maybe people use them in conjunction. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All of the energy modalities can be used together. Absolutely right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think EFT, though, is something that you can take home with you when you leave the session. You always have it. If you have your hands with you, you can tap wherever you are. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, one thing I wanted to mention when you were talking about how, um, you know, children from age zero to seven are being uh, programmed, so to speak. <laughs> this is something that should be taught as, and I've said this about many other modalities, but this is something that should be taught to parents or even in school. If, you know, we're, when you think about what children are exposed to and how their subconscious is being formed, let's say. Right. Exactly right. One important issue to that, one important aspect is that we have to, this is not to blame the parents because the parents are using their software that they downloaded from their parents. So exactly. And on and on and back through the ancestry. So that's all they have. That's what they know to be true. So they're passing that on to their children. So no one wants them to blame anyone here. It's just that it could be, they could change their, um, they could change their software and then be able to pass on better software to their children. And so there's, I just want to preface that with there's no blame in any of that. Yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, there, there can't be really, because like you said, I mean, pe people are doing the best they can with the capabilities and, you know, mindset that they have. So no one, you know, no one is, is um, doing anything purposely to their children. Oh. It's just, it's just, oh, well, this is the way that I was raised. And so this must be the right, the right way to do it or the best way to do it. That's exactly right. Yes. And I'm, I wanted to talk a little bit about my niche with EFT and that is pregnant moms. And I, do, and that just doesn't just mean a mom that is pregnant at the moment. I believe that everyone is pregnant. I know that sounds a little odd, but let me just- oh, You're going to explain. <laughs> I think I know where you're going, but go ahead. So we're all pregnant with something like ideas. We have a company that we want to develop. That's, a, that's something that we want to birth and bring into the world. So, and something is holding us back. So my niche is to get rid of the blocks that are in the way of giving birth to whatever it is that you want to give birth to. Um, and pregnant moms, I, want, I work with moms before they get pregnant. There might be something blocking them from getting pregnant. Moms during pregnancy. And to teach them this very thing, Diane, of the chemistry that they're sharing with their baby when they're, before their baby is born. The, pre, the chemistry of stress, the chemistry of all of these things that they are sharing with their baby is something that they need to learn, that they are affecting their baby. Not just now, but you know, after the, the birth. And then after the birth, um, you know, post and working with moms then. So that pretty much covers the gamut of, of uh, all of the pregnancy aspects. And then 
you know, anything beyond that. There could be all kinds of um, pitfalls or, or things that happened along the way. You know, there could be um, a miscarriage or something like that. And that's all part of it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, I think that that it should be taught to moms, it should be taught in schools. I mean, I think many of these, um, you know, more spiritual, meditative, energy medicine type modalities, it shouldn't be, most of our society, I think, unfortunately, still looks at it as out there. <laughs> and yeah. really, these, these things should be the core of what we teach our children. Right. Well, there's a, there's a real surgence of functional doctors out there now, you know, alternative medicine. And it's interesting, there's a new statistic out about that, that 75% of functional doctors, rather, sorry, allopathic doctors and nurses take their family members to functional doctors. How funny. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's really, and I am on the Reiki team at May Medical Center in Portland, and I'm seeing a huge shift in the acceptance of Reiki in the hospital. It's been, we've been doing it for 15 years with the patients at the hospital, but I, I'm seeing now doctors coming into the room and saying, oh, I'll be back instead of coming in and saying, okay, I'm here now, you have to leave. You know, so there's a shift in energy, there's a shift in acceptance of Reiki. Are you, do you feel, uh, I mean, are you seeing this more in the last few months because of the whole COVID situation or you're saying that you have started to see this even before that? I saw the beginnings of this a year and a half ago. Okay, yeah. that's great. Because, I mean, I've been saying that I think this whole situation recently is going to be a huge um, opportunity for functional medicine. You know, we call them alternative. And to me, that word kind of makes me crazy because I feel like, you know, a lot of these modalities go back 500 plus years. It's not alternative. It's just that the U.S. didn't never adopted them. You know, there's Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine modalities and many Eastern spiritual types of things that people have been practicing for hundreds of years. Exactly. Yeah, we, yeah, we call it alternative or complementary when at traditional medicine should be what we're calling complementary. <laughs> it should be the other way. Right, right. And the functional medicine, I mean, that, that, the definition of that is, is perfect. You know, it just goes back to the core of the problem. What's really causing this? It's not about what pill we can give you. It's about what's really causing this. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And not just put a bandaid on it. Oh, we're just going to treat this one symptom. And then, you know, let's not talk about what, what that, how many other symptoms that drug causes <laughs> or, you know, where it go, okay, we might fix this thing, but then something else happens. It's just, you know. Right. Right. And all of those negative feelings and all of that fear and the cortisol and, and all of what plays into that really brings your immune system's ability to function way down. It, it, there's, a, there's a choice that we have to make. We can be positive and feed our immune system. Our immune system loves positivity. It's our energy system. Or we can be negative and be worried and speaking the words of worry, you know, and feeding your subconscious more of that, which brings you, it, it just, it just makes your immune system go into hiding. You know, it, it, um, it hurts it actually. Yeah. I mean, and isn't that the whole catch 22 of the COVID-19 situation is that the reason why we have so many, you know, issues with it is because so many people's immune systems are depleted and right. yet we're creating more stress and more worry and more, more anxiety, which is going to do what? De deplete your immune system even further. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So not complaining about it, maybe tuning out of the news, just giving yourself a break from the headlines and the news because we, we ingest that, we ingest yeah. that energy that's coming through the TV set. 
or you know over the internet or whatever it is that where you're reading it so i, I feel like the news is like a soap opera yeah. you could watch it one one day a week and you're not going to miss anything <laughs> i mean seriously but yeah that i mean i've been telling people that too you know it's like listen if you feel like you absolutely need to see what's happening every day limit it to like 15 or 20 minutes or one news segment they just keep repeating the same thing over and over at the next hour anyway <laughs> pretty much yes yeah yeah, yeah. awesome um so the other thing I just wanted to touch on, you have other modalities that you offer within energy psychology that you wanted to talk about a little bit. Yes, I do something called matrix re-imprinting, which is a, a little bit different form of tapping, actually. I say that because it uses tapping in the process. But matrix re-imprinting is, we just did some tapping and that was one-on-one. -on -one. We were talking to our, ourselves, actually. Matrix asks, when in your life did this problem begin? So if, um, if we came up with something like, I'm afraid to go grocery shopping or something like that, I would say to you, when was the first time you felt that fear of going grocery shopping? And you might say, um, gee, I don't know. Or you might say, you know, and this, it happens this way a lot. You know, when I was five, my mom took me grocery shopping and I remember we were in the checkout line and I asked her if I could have a candy bar and she had a fit. She got so angry at me and I started crying and it made it worse and she embarrassed me, you know, on and on and on. So that's the trauma that you're carrying, you've been carrying since you were five. And so now as an adult, you're afraid to go to the grocery store because of your younger self is still scared. Your adult self is not, but your younger self is still scared and your younger self dwells within you. So the process of matrix re-imprinting is that we go, we, I and your adult self go to your younger self and ask her if it's okay if we tap on her and she said she say yes and telling her that we're here to keep her safe and that she's going to enjoy the tapping and so i tap on you and you tap on your younger self you imagine that you're tapping on your younger self and i'm tapping on you and you're repeating after me for a few minutes just to just to get her to um, calm down and then she says what's on her mind and this is her chance her your younger self's chance to say to your mom her mom what it is she was feeling that day and how she, her mom made her feel and she gets to speak her truth and she gets to hear her mom say whatever she needs her mom to say which is probably i'm so sorry I was upset. I knew I didn't have enough money to buy the candy bar. And I didn't tell you that because I was embarrassed. And I just took it out on you. And I'm so sorry. And she gives her a hug. And, and those feelings get released because they're spoken. And there's tapping going on on the body. And they get released. It can be very emotional. And that's fine. That's part of it. And once we, once the, once she said everything she wants to say, and her mom has said everything she wants to say, we go into um, just a little more of a process and put our hands on our heart and breathe in through the top of our head, the positive energy that's been created by this letting go. And you can just probably feel that in your body right now. Yeah. Just just breathing that in and breathing it out through your heart, 360 degrees so that it surrounds you forever. And what happens is when we are, when we go into, when we were five and we went into that trauma space, part of us gets split off 
from our energy and it's called an echo and it stays out and it and it just keeps on running and running and running it's like a program on your computer you might have word and excel and all these programs open they're drawing energy from your hard drive on your computer all the time that they're open and this echo is drawing energy all your whole life all the time and every time you think of going to the grocery store it says don't do that you know what happened last time something might happen you might you might get someone might yell at you don't we don't want to go to the grocery store so you feel that fight or flight so that's what that is and after matrix that comes back into your body and you end up feeling much more whole because it's no longer out here it's not scared anymore it's back here so that's matrix re-imprinting okay i have two questions um so let's say let's just take that example of something that happened like at the grocery store i think that could also manifest in another way meaning meaning it could manifest in a way like let's say your um what am i trying to think of like not necessarily fear of going to the grocery store but maybe fear of going somewhere else fear of traveling maybe even fear of flying something like that so i think it could simply be just exactly what the scenario was it turns into fear of going to that store but it could but i feel like it could also turn into another kind of fear is that do you believe that yes it could definitely turn into that it could be it could turn into fear of your mom right well there are lots of aspects to it um fear is it's like a drumbeat it goes out into the into the vibration when you're fearful that's your drumbeat um so yes you're right it could it could extend out and also um this can work for people who have had trauma as an adult too right the trauma didn't necessarily have to occur when you were between you know zero and seven or even like a young adult absolutely i always ask when do you think that the first time was that you know you felt that feeling and a lot of people say i have no idea i just don't have any idea and so that's how where we start tapping we start tapping on even though i don't know where this came from and as we're tapping invariably something will come up and it could be maybe it's not the core but it's like you said it's an it's an ulterior thing that comes up something will come up and they'll 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 make a connection so and you can't do this wrong there's no right or wrong way it's not like you're doing it you know you're not coming up with something so it doesn't work or anything like that that's not what this is about at all not at all no i mean some some things could be so deep that it's going to take a while for you to if ever you know make that connection as to when something happened that that you know triggered that response right exactly and there's another um there's there are many techniques to EFT and one of them is the movie technique and i'm glad that you just said it could be something deeper because that's where we use the movie technique when something is um so deep that you're not ready to look at it yet you're just not ready and that comes up in in the movie technique i would ask you to um we you would know you don't even have to tell me what the issue is it's not like i have to know everything you don't even have to tell me what i can tap with you without even knowing what it is um but in the movie technique i would ask you to get the scenario in your head and give it a title like a movie title just give it a movie title and you might say the movie title is the last pajama party Okay, so I would have you say the last pajama party, and as you're and you begin saying that the last, and you start to cry. You can't even get through the title because it's so tied to this incident that's in your mind. And I don't know. I don't need to know what it is. So we start over again, and we have you try to say the title, and and you know a couple of tries. You get to the end of the title. and that's how the movie technique works you put the you run the scenario up on a screen so that you're not in it you're away from it 
you're watching it on a screen. So it's not touching you. You get to talk about it as if it's on the screen. And it's much easier to talk about something and to work on something when it's not, you don't feel like you're sitting in it. Mm. And it's up on a screen and you can talk about it and it's not gonna affect you as much, you know? Right, right, exactly, that's great. Well, this has been awesome. Uh, before we go, I want to make sure people know how they can get in touch with you, how you want people to, you know, reach out to you. If you have anything, uh, any upcoming virtual or, uh, when we're all able to live events, anything that you want to mention for people to know. Well, I do Facebook lives. Um, and so it's Karen, you can just look up Karen St. Clair on Facebook and you'll see me and, um, we'll become friends. And you can see that all those videos and then um, my website is a good place to contact me it's Karen St. Clair EFT.com okay and that's S-T-C-L-A-I-R correct correct okay yeah. Karen St. Clair EFT.com and my phone number for to make an appointment with me or through my website but my phone number is 207-878-8318 and obviously we can do this virtually because yes. we just did it today. Yes. Yeah, so you're seeing people virtually right now. I'm seeing people virtually on Zoom and also on FaceTime, whichever works for them. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's great. Well, thank you again for being with us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this uh, was recorded. We'll have it up on our website, naturalnutmeg.com, elmain.com, and on our Facebook sites as well and we hope everybody enjoyed it and we'll connect with you karen and thanks again okay thank you everybody have a great day thanks bye bye